Welcome to Corporal's Corner. Today I want to talk about my go-to hitches, lashes, and knots. So stick around. I received a question from one of my subscribers, and to be honest, I've gotten this question several times. And it goes along the lines of, why do I show the same knots, same lashes, same hitches, all throughout my videos? Well, here's my answer. I believe in simplicity. And with that comes the ability to do more with less. And I'm also of the humble opinion, my humble opinion, that one can be perfectly capable and competent to endure a 72-hour scenario all the way up through a long-term situation, armed with simply a few lashes, a couple of hitches, and a handful of knots. Now think about that. When the situation comes, do you want to stumble and fumble, no matter how many times you practice them, trying to remember which lash is better, which knot works well in the situation? I don't want to. So I want to keep things simple. It builds muscle memory. And hopefully when that situation occurs, I'm on it. Now, what I've done here is I've compiled a bunch of old footage and combined it with new footage. And I'm gonna give you a two part series on my go-to lashes, hitches, and knots. Enjoy. The Marlin Spike Hitch is basically used to attach a spike, stake, or even toggle to a piece of cordage in order to form a T-handle. However, for me, it's one of my go-to hitches simply for the fact that once you make a Marlin Spike Hitch, it can be turned into a few of my favorite knots as well. Now to create our Marlin Spike Hitch, all we're going to do, we're going to rotate it over and make a loop. Now take that loop and lay it down on top of itself. Reach inside and pull it through. It creates a pocket. Now take your spike, your stake or toggle, place it inside there and pull it tight. So what this does is it creates your T-handle or the beginnings of a rung for a ladder. We have a ridge line set up right here. On that end over there, we have a trucker's hitch. Over here is our quick release. So all we gotta do, grab onto our improvised Marlin spike, slide it out, it comes undone. For me, the number one choice when making a ridge line in the field is the trucker's hitch. It's excellent for keeping a line under tension. It also has a built-in quick release. I'm right-handed, so I'm taking my left hand, place it underneath my line. Now this line right here is attached to the opposite tree over on that end using our bowlin and our stake. So I'm taking my left hand, palms up, grab my line, I'm going to rotate it towards the tree, and that creates a loop. I'm going to place that loop on top of my line, reach inside and pull it towards the tree, just like that. Now my opposite end, I'm going to go ahead and pass through that loop. just like that, and I'll pull it towards the tree. The more I pull, the tighter it's gonna be. Now at this point right here, you have a loop and a line. Take my thumb, place it next to that loop, index finger, and pinch them both together. Drape your cordage over, reach inside, pull it through. So far, so good. Now let's go ahead and change gears and move into my go-to knots. Now I want you to keep the mindset of simplicity. Most of the knots, not all, but most of the knots that I'm gonna show you can be performed by some variation of an overhand knot, pretzel knot, marlin spike hitch, or both. 
A simple overhand knot is the perfect stopper knot, especially when you don't want any part of that line to slip past a certain point. A basic slip knot is a knot that will tighten on itself when the end that forms the loop is pulled on. And there are several different ways to tie this. So we're going to start off with our overhand knot or our pretzel knot. And we're going to leave it loose. Then we're going to take our opposite end and feed it through the bottom and just adjust it to the size of loop that you want. And that gives you your basic slip knot. Another way, and my personal favorite, is to start off with a marlin spike hitch. So all we're going to do, take one end and twist it over. Then lay it down, reach inside, pull it through, it forms that pocket, and if you look, it also gives you a slip knot. A jam knot is simply the combination of an overhand knot and a slip knot. It does the exact same thing as a slip knot. When the line that forms the loop is pulled on, the knot will tighten down causing that overhand knot to jam against that slip knot, preventing it from slipping. Now just like our slip knot, there's a couple of different ways to tie this. I'm going to take one end and do my overhand knot or pretzel knot. We'll simply do it again. Leave it loose. Take my other end, pass it through, adjust the loop to the size that I want, pull my end, and the overhand knot or stop knot becomes jammed against my slip knot. Another option, start off with our overhand knot or pretzel knot. Just like before, with our slip knot, we'll move into a marlin spike hitch, make that loop, lay it down, reach inside, pull it through, it forms that pocket. Just like last time, pull on it, our overhand knot acting as a stopper knot becomes jammed against our slip knot, forming the jam knot. A basic bowline is the perfect end of the line loop because once the loop is formed and under tension, it will not slip. For option number one, we're going to simply go up a couple inches and just make a loop. Take our end, little brown eel comes out of the cave, goes into the hole, comes back out of the hole and back into the cave again. And for option number two, and my personal favorite, the bowline using the marlin spike hitch. So once again, rotate over, make that loop, lay it down, reach inside and pull it through. Forms that pocket. Now taking your end, pass it through that pocket towards yourself, bend it around, pinch, and pull it tight. A fisherman's knot is the perfect knot to use when you want to join two pieces of cordage to create a loop.
So tying a fishing loose knot is very simple. All you're doing is making a loop that's held together by two overhand knots. So all we're going to do is take our ends and lay them on top of each other. You got one on top, you got one on the bottom. Let's go ahead and start with the one on top. I'm going to take it, go away from myself, and simply tie that overhand knot or pretzel knot. There's that pretzel shape. I'm going to pull it tight. Now the one on the bottom, I'm going to go towards myself. Push it back through. Then pull it tight. A lark's head knot is a versatile self-tightening knot that works perfectly with a toggle in order to suspend gear. Now take your loop that you created with your fisherman's knot and simply pass it through itself. And that creates your lark's head knot. And option number two, let's say you don't have a loop. Take your end, go up, around, it forms that seat right there. Go back up, place it through that seat. Now you want to finish it off right here with an overhand knot. So what you want to do is you want to include this one right here, go around, There's your overhand knot, your classic pretzel shape. I'll simply pull it tight. And you can see that lark's head loop right there being stopped by your overhand knot. It's not going anywhere. The Prusik or Prusik knot is ideal for attaching a loop to an existing line, like a ridge line. It self-tightens under friction, which makes it ideal to be combined with a toggle and a shelter system. So whatever direction you push or pull it, it doesn't slip back on itself. There's one. There's two. And there's three. And then go ahead and dress it up. Make it look nice. And voila. And as always, Let's go ahead and take our hitches, our knots, and put them all together. Taking my loop from my trucker's hitch, I'm going to pass it through a loop on my tarp. Now this could be a grommet also, and it will work just as fine. Once I pass it through, like that, I'm going to grab a stick from the ground, or a tent stake, and I pass it through that loop, grab the bottom cordage, and tighten it down. This toggle will hold this tarp in place. Taking one of my loops, I'm going to tie a Prusik knot on my ridge line. Just like before, I'm going to take my loop. Pass it through the loop on my tarp. I'm on the opposite end. Take a toggle, slip it inside. Now grab my Prusik, and the more I pull on it, the tighter it's going to be. Using my other loops, pass it through. Put one inside the other. Then go ahead and anchor it.
Welcome back, that was good to go. Keep the mindset of simplicity. It builds muscle memory, and most importantly, the practice will make you better. Thank you for your comments and view support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.